Yes, so the data that was presented at AHS Scottsdale um, was the review study. And the review study is a real world study. It was an observational multi-site US-based study that included 94 patients with chronic migraine who had been receiving eptinizumab. And those that were included had to have been using eptinizumab for at least two consecutive infusions um, or six months of treatment duration. Although when we included our cohort of patients, many of these patients had been on treatment for over one year. And what we found in this real world study is that overall there was high levels of satisfaction after using eptinizumab in this real world patient population. Individuals found that there were a higher number of good days and these good days were defined by the patient. There was high satisfaction in the reduction of migraine symptoms, frequency, severity, duration of attacks, and interestingly, not only improvement in those pain-related migraine symptoms, but also the non-pain migraine symptoms, including brain fog, which was found to be very important from a patient perspective. There was also high levels of satisfaction with day-to-day -day, um, living and productivity, as well as the infusion experience overall. When we're looking at the key takeaways from this, I think it's really important to look at who this cohort of patients were. The cohort of patients were very much treatment experienced. All individuals had been on one or more migraine preventive medication in the past. In addition, 89% of these individuals had had exposure to at least one CGRP monoclonal antibody in the past, and of that, 27% had exposure to three CGRP monoclonal antibodies in the past. So this was a highly treatment experienced cohort. Yet in this group of individuals, they found that there was an increased number of good days, an increased satisfaction migraine symptoms, and of course, increased um, improvement in daily living and work productivity. I also found another key takeaway is the importance of these non-pain migraine symptoms. In our diagnostic criteria for migraine, and when we're even having conversations with patients about migraine, often we're focusing on pain-related symptoms, um, pain severity, the quality of pain. However, in the review study, brain fog or difficulty with thinking clearly or speaking clearly was identified as a very bothersome symptom. It was actually ranked third in bothersome symptoms, second to head pain and head pain worsen with movement was then thinking clearly. And so brain fog is something that's very important for patients. And we found that in this real world study, when asking patients about improvement of brain fog, that the majority of patients did report that there was at least some degree of improvement with respect to this brain fog. 